Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. So, I was just kind of thinking to myself, like trying to figure out what I was going to talk about, and randomly going to my mind um, was the question, why do I like puzzles? What about it makes me actually enjoy them? And I started thinking, what is it about them? Well, it's the solving, like, the problem-solving situation. One thing led to another, and the next thing I knew it, I was kind of in a spiral thought process of... Is there more to it than just that? Well, the more I thought about it, the more I realized a lot of people do like that kind of stuff. And yet, for some reason... There was a weird connection on comparing that to a topic that everybody, well, almost everybody doesn't like, mathematics. Yeah, that's where I'm going with this video. Comparing problem solving to mathematics. The one school topic that almost everybody hates. And if they don't hate it, they don't like it. I'm one of very few who actually don't mind Mathematicus. But why? That's the question that's spiraling in my head that I'm still trying to figure out. People like problem solving, like puzzles, and then other problem solving where you have to think through a riddle or something, and yet people don't like math. But it's basically, in a sense, Kind of the same thing. Just reworded. Good example. 10 squared. Let's go with 2 squared because I don't want a brain right now. <laughs> but... No, I'm just, I'm just messing around. I was going to say 2 squared originally anyway. So 2 squared. That 2 times 2, 4. Uh, or 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2. That would be 8. If we were to go with 10 squared, like I originally said, it would be 100. 10 cubed. 1,000, I believe. Yeah. But regardless, my point is... Yeah, it's numbers, and people don't like putting numbers together sometimes, and it's just some people think it's a waste of time when there are a lot of jobs out there that need it. But at the same time, it's also problem-solving. Look at it this way. It's more fun to come with solutions when it's multiple solutions are the right answer, and in math that can be the case. Sometimes, but for the most part, it's not. So maybe that's the reason. I don't know. But anyway, I digress. I've kind of learned... I kind of did some looking and digging, but no matter what angle I looked at, I always seem to stroll back to the idea that math is problem-solving. And problem-solving... It's a form of problem-solving. And... To a specific degree... You always hear these, like, questions where, um, they'll, like, say, well, there are eight apples in a bowl. Susie took three, and Jerry took one. How many apples do you have left? That's, like, eight minus three minus one. That would, that would be four. And it's, like, that's problem solving in a sense it's a storytelling problem solve but you bring up the word math and all of a sudden if i were to if i were just to put that in a more complex scenario like a, a genuine puzzle like a put together puzzle like one of these all right guys we started to put this thing together this thing says we have 550 pieces. How many pieces do we have on the board right now? Oh, there were like 60. You counted it that fast? Yeah, I, 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 don't judge me. Well, uh, 
And then you look through it and you realize, oh crap. It doesn't seem like we have all the pieces then. Which, how many pieces are we missing? You go through it and you find out, okay, we're missing this, these, these many pieces. We need to look for them. It happens all the time. Any of you who have kids know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's just when you, real life scenarios are filled with that kind of puzzle solving. And yes, puzzle solving can be fun, but it also could be, also could be detrimental. Especially on, for something like that, and especially when you have a child who might potentially, you know, choke on it. it just situations like that. I think not a lot of people don't like mathematics, but because mathematics, it, it puts your brain in the mindset of liking puzzle solving. I mean, heck, one, one of my favorite franchises, and many of you know this by now, is the Legend of Zelda franchise. Why? You know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised if mathematics was the reason for that. It's not like science classes are going to make you go, Okay, t you like solving puzzles now, right? No, I like watching things go boom. I feel like... The more I think about it, actually... Let's revert to science. Cla science classes. Psychology, biology, stuff like that. A lot of the time, you're tampering with things. And... Well... It makes people like getting like it makes people like to get experimental. So I guess if we're going by games, science is the reason people who like science are the people who who usually like strategic type games. For example, Risk. Risk is a kind of game where you have to strategize, but it's very fun, and. It's something that I actually own that I love doing. That's why I keep looking. I'm looking down at my games every time I do that, by the way. My board games are literally down over there. Anyway, it's just a good example of what I'm talking about. Um, now, science, a lot more people like science, but a lot that kind of shows, it kind of reflects when you see that a lot more people actually like strategy-based games. Risk, no shock on this next title, Stratego, um, in a sense, card games like poker or, uh, spades, like those are also luck based, but strategy games sometimes have luck, you need luck on your side as well. It, it's interesting to think about. Now, science, you get experimental, and in strategy games, you get experimental. Now, why in any world would this relate to real life? Well, when you revert back to the kind of the problem solving situation mentally, you sometimes have to get experimental. If you're trying to figure out how to resolve a problem between like like needed circumstances, sometimes you gotta experiment. You'll fail a lot, which is a big thing in a science situation like Every time you fail, you just get up and try, try again. Well, that's exactly what's going on in that circumstance, and it's kind of hard to believe that under these fronts, um, people wouldn't understand that like you just have to strategize and have to go about figure out how to go about things in very particular ways. I don't know. These are two topics that kind of just crossed my mind over time, and I was think I was, I was like, I don't know. It, like, when I started thinking of these things that I just brought up, I started thinking even, I started delving even deeper. Each different type of scenario that's presented, game, reality, or just school topic, how does each benefit, and how do they compare to problem solving, because when you think about it, both science and math do. So let's go to history. How in the world would history have anything to do with problem solving, especially for the current? Well, 
How about trivia? Trivia games. Trivial Pursuit, for example. You kinda have to know stuff to be able to figure out Trivial Pursuit. Um, but if we're talking about real-life scenarios, well, what about archaeologists? They'll find some, they'll be like, how is this significant? I don't know. Without that kind of knowledge, they'd look at, they'd find things and go, oh, cool, bones. Have we found this yet? I don't know, I'll Stilbert. Uh, Stilbert won't know. <laughs> like, you, you, resolving situations... IRL do depend on all these needed topics. A another good example, since I'm going to narrow these next ones down a little bit more than talk about the first two I talked about. Um, I think another good example would... Uh, well, let's see. Phys Ed. Everyone needs to take it, but it's not that hard to pass. It's notoriously easy to pass. For me, it was a little bit of a different story, but that's the story for another day, but... <sighs> Phys Ed, notoriously easy to get through, because all you had to do was show up and actually do workout stuff. And, well, what exactly... How, how does that benefit reality? Well, people like sports, and the more people do that kind of stuff, the more they end up liking sports. So it does make sense. And just that on its own, you know how many people out there have kind of a sports-related career on their hands when they've done stuff like that? There are a lot, and almost every single one does. Now, some of them don't end up going down that path. Like my dad, for example. He wanted to do something in sports, but he didn't end up doing it, and he's an accountant instead. I guess, given due time, he probably just would have died away from him or something. He enjoys watching him, but I don't know, maybe over time something would have happened. I guess you never really know with fate. Or whatever term you want to use. But regardless, how... In what sense would that have anything to do with solving situations? Phys Ed. How about... The fact that phys ed is the thing that also keeps you from being all weak and nimble. It'll allow you to help do other jobs as well. Retail, for example. A lot of people have to carry really heavy boxes and, well, first of all, everyone knows carry with the legs, not the back. But you also need pretty strong arms and legs to be able to carry anything anyway. Hence the PE. I don't know. These are a few pretty good examples, I think. They kind of reflect reality and problem solving. These are my thoughts, and this is kind of just what strolled through my head, so there you have it. If you guys like this video, make sure to push that like button, and so far you can't see it anymore. Also, if you have any thoughts on stuff like this, let me know in the comments below, along with any topic you'd like to see on here. Want to check out anything else I've done prior to this? And I'm pretty sure I'm starting to get hiccups now. Great. Link's on the side of my head. Or if you want to check out anything else that I've done. Skits. Gaming stuff. Uh, just goof off things. Vlogs. Whatever it might be. Check out the channel itself if you have not yet. And consider subscribing if, again, you have not yet. In the meantime, though, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for watching this video, guys. And I hope to see all of you in another one. Bye for now.